When I first encountered the internet, I thought it was gonna set us all free. We were all gonna work at home, in our underwear, trading things back and forth. It was a world where anything was possible, and we were gonna do it in our own time. But instead, we strap these devices to ourselves and have them ping us every time somebody texts us or messages us, as if we're supposed to respond to everything, as if it's this real-time emergency crisis. And that's what's put us in this state of present shock. The only kind of people that were interrupted this frequently and this incessantly used to be you know, 911 operators and air traffic controllers. And they would only do it for two or three hours during the day, and they would be medicated in order to live that way. Present shock, present shock. Present shock is the human response to living in a world where everything happens now. It's a real time, always on existence, without any sense of beginning, middle, or an end. It's just now. On the one hand, you could just go into the moment. You could have this kind of a Tao-like sense of peace, and here we are, I'm in the present, but most of us aren't there. Most of us are instead chasing this kind of false now of our Twitter feeds and our email inboxes, trying to catch up with the moment as if the present wasn't something we live in, but the present was something we had a grasp to. And the problem for us is the inability to be in touch with any of the natural rhythms that underlie our human experience. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos, which means time on the clock, and kairos, which means human timing. So you could ask, you know, what time did you crash the car? Oh, I crashed it at 4.01. But what time do you tell dad you crashed the car? 4.17? No, you tell dad you crashed the car after he's had his drink and before he's opened the bills, right? That's kairos. It's the sense of readiness or human timing, something that only people can understand as we move through the temporal landscape of human experience. The industrial age was all about chronos. Time is money, do things faster, increase your production over time. And what we've ended up doing really is take 21st century technology and use it to reinforce the 13th century operating system. This is really the, the central problem of this age this conflation and confusion between Kairos and Kronos, this use of technology really to take people out of the time that only people can understand. We're spending an increasing amount of our time on digital landscapes about which we know little or nothing. You know, we treat the web and these devices as if they're pre-existing conditions of nature, but they're not. They're platforms that were designed by people and corporations with very specific designs on on who we are and what we do. You know, if you ask a kid, you know, what's Facebook for? They'll tell you, oh, Facebook's here to help me make friends. If you go to the boardroom at Facebook, I promise you, they're not sitting there thinking, how are we gonna help little Johnny maintain his friendships? No, they're looking at how are they gonna monetize Johnny's social graph and his big data. So this is why we're getting such unpredictable results with our technologies. We're incorporating them into our lives without any real sense of who made them and what they made them for. No, and if you don't know what a program you're using is for, then chances are it's using you instead. So I think the easiest way to contend with present shock is to embrace the present, find the present, explore and reify the rhythms that are informing who you are as a person and as a human organism just living on the planet. Most people don't realize that each phase of the moon corresponds to a different neurotransmitter in the body. With the first week of a new moon, our body tends to be dominated by acetylcholine, which is a very specific neurotransmitter associated with new ideas and making new friends and being open-minded. If you're in the second week of a, of a moon, you tend to be dominated by serotonin, which is all about getting things done and being industrious and reaching conclusions. If you're in the third week, right after the full moon, you're dominated by dopamine. It's really the, the party neurotransmitter. You wanna relax and, and enjoy people and 
not work, right? You're not about getting anything done. If you're in the last week of a moon, you tend to be dominated by norepinephrine. It's a very analytical chemical, one that's associated with organizing things, with moving above the situation and seeing what happens when, how do I sequence this, how should I plan my life, where do I put everything? It's kind of a colder state that's not really about bonding with other people and much more about figuring out the structures underlying things. The simplest things, day and night, seasons of the year, phases of the moon, these are how human beings grew up. This is what predated civilization. This is what makes us feel at home on planet Earth. And it's what can give us coherence to help find the rhythms by which people really live, to connect to the rhythms that everybody else is living and no longer be victims of present shock. Now, present shock is disorienting, I get that. Whenever we move from one technological age to another, there's bound to be a bit of wobble. But this moment's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity to use technology and humanity really to embrace both kinds of time, to really bring them together, to create, if anything, a new synthesis in our understanding of time. What are the rhythms? What are the patterns underlying human experience? And how can we live really in harmony with them rather than constantly trying to work against them? You know, I think that we have a, a choice here. We can use these technologies in the wrong way, I'd argue, right, to, to create ever more conformity, more schedules, more restrictions, more regimentation, more robotic activity for people so that we're more efficient and get more done. Or we can use these technologies instead to create more time, more space for people to be people, free ourselves and write programs that allow us to return to human time and let our machines take care of Kronos for us. To restore the rhythms that give us coherence and that help us to rediscover one another culturally, socially, as really living organisms, rather than uh, just cogs in a machine. This could be the moment that we release ourselves from really 2,000 years of understanding time as a burden, understanding time as something that contains human beings, and instead see it as a partner. Right? We have Kronos to keep track of what's going on, and we have Kairos to actually live it. If we can do that, then this moment of present shock will be the moment we remember as the time that we set ourselves free.